In this video, I turn a harmless toy bulldozer into your Achilles tendon's worst nightmare. This video is sponsored by ComGrow and their new giant T500 3D printer. More on them later. It's estimated that the global economy is worth around $100 trillion. A number that big can be difficult to wrap your head around. What can really help bring it into perspective is that the bulldozer market alone is worth $7 billion a year. And not only that, but you can also go out and buy a fully functional mini bulldozer. Of course there's a big market for real bulldozers, but it turns out that there are so many people in this world that there's also a market for miniature bulldozers. A market big enough to support a company that makes nothing but miniature bulldozers. Go sit under a tree and think about that one for a while. It's wild. There's a lot of people. I can't believe this thing actually exists. It's literally just like a real bulldozer, but tiny. It's made out of real steel, and it weighs 60 real pounds. It even has real hydraulics that you have to fill with real hydraulic fluid. So that's pretty neat. But the big question I had was, can it do real work? So I brought it outside to find out. With the hydraulics, you can control the height of the blade and the height of the plow. You can also tilt the plow and control the angle of the blade. Operating all these things at once plus driving it is not easy because it uses a standard RC plane type controller with two sticks. Pushing the left and the right sticks forward and backwards to control each track is pretty intuitive, but pushing the sticks side to side controls the hydraulics, which is not intuitive and takes some serious time to get used to. Upon trying to dig up my yard, I realized that this thing is a bit finicky with the types of soil it will operate in. The ground here was really dense and muddy with lots of weeds. This turned out to be difficult terrain for a mini bulldozer. The blade in the front couldn't really dig into the ground at all without the track slipping, and the plow in the back would get caught on all the weeds and roots pretty easily. I think this is mainly because as you scale down a vehicle's size, the surface area contacting the ground scales down more slowly than the vehicle's weight. So while this model is 1 14th the size of a real bulldozer, it has much less than 1 14th the amount of traction of a real bulldozer. So for that reason, it can only really work in loose dry soil. All the dirt in my yard is pretty compact. Let's take this thing out of the town and see what it can do. Some of this more coarse gravel can be difficult for it. Then again, if those rocks were scaled up 14 times as big, I'm sure a real bulldozer would struggle with them too. It does okay in the skate park. The metal tracks maybe don't have quite as much traction as you'd want, but it can get the job done. Maybe in the future we'll have fleets of little mini bulldozers cleaning up the trash in our cities. How great would that be? One thing that this bulldozer does do a great job of is pushing leaves. Not saying it's going to replace your leaf blower or rake anytime soon, but it does move the leaves around alright. It would take you all day to clear the leaves from just a small yard, but that's okay. This thing's job isn't to rake leaves. Its job is just to look cute and entertain bored males with disposable income. If you think about it, that's the exact same job a stripper has. The only difference is, this bulldozer can't double as your therapist. If you try and talk to it, it'll just reply with which is another fun feature. It has a built-in speaker that makes engine and horn noises. This thing might not be able to dig holes in my yard, but can it at least manage the foliage? The blade on the front isn't sharp enough to cut through the weeds when it's scraped over the ground, but it can push them over and make the yard look like a bit less of a jungle, so that's nice. Turns out, real bulldozers are commonly used for tree clearing, so I guess the weeds in the yard are the small scale version of that. Look at them topple, they don't stand a chance. Apart from knocking over weeds and taking out the trash, this thing has turned out to be… eh, maybe not the most practical investment. If it's going to be worth its weight for my yard work, then it's going to need some serious modifications. Real bulldozers that are used for forestry work are typically outfitted with a special attachment like this spear cage that seems like it would be perfect for a zombie apocalypse. So my bulldozer probably needs something too. These are the two big brushless motors that propelled my direct drive snowcat up to 50 miles an hour. For this project, they're going to be repurposed to spin these saw blades with 3.5 horsepower each. To mount the saw blades onto the motors, I had to drill some holes in them with a drill press, and I used this 3D printed guide to get the holes in the right position. Those holes were used to mount these hub clamps so we can attach the blades to the motor shaft. After that, I hopped into Onshape to design the part that would hold both the motors together, brace the motor shafts, and connect everything to the bulldozer. 
Onshape is great for this type of project because it's free for hobbyists and it runs in a web browser, so it's super quick and easy to open up and make whatever part you need. Since all the data is stored in the cloud, sharing files and collaborating is super easy. If any of you want to check out my design, it's available at the link in the description. Next, it was time to print the gigantic blade mount on the Comgro T500. The build volume of this 3D printer is 500 by 500 millimeters, so it had plenty of room to spare while printing this part. So far, I'm really liking this printer. At first, I was a little concerned that its huge size would sacrifice fine detail, but that turned out to not be the case at all. This Benchy I printed looks really good for such a huge printer. Also, such large print beds usually make first layer adhesion and bed leveling really difficult, but the T500 has print bed contour mapping that actually works, unlike other large printers who will remain unnamed. With the T500, you can clearly see the Z-axis moving to perfectly match the contour of the bed. At the end of this video, I'll show another fun project I made on this printer that tried to take full advantage of its giant build volume. But for now, let's move on to the rest of the build. I pressed in some ball bearings that would support the shafts, and then screwed in some quarter inch aluminum motor mounting plates that were left over from the direct to drive snowcat. I'm using 15mm solid aluminum shafts for the blades, and those were cut down to size, and then inserted into the bearings in the blade mount. I'm using this big clamp coupler to adapt the 15mm aluminum shaft to the 10mm motor shaft. The motors bolt onto the plates, and then the whole thing goes together. The saw blades clamp onto the shafts via those hubs from the snowcat kit. To mount the entire assembly onto the bulldozer, I drilled some holes in the sides of the blade, and then built a wooden frame around the entire dozer to help support the weight of the heavy motors and saw blades. That whole thing bolted through the holes that I drilled on the blade. Next I mounted the motor drivers with some 3D printed parts, and then had Ethan weld a nub to the bottom of the blade so that an elastic band could wrap around it and help support the weight of the saw blades. That way it wasn't all resting on the hydraulics. With all the stuff on there, this thing weighed 75 pounds. Pretty ridiculous. Okay, now we're going to try it with a 12S battery. <laughs> yeah, that's too scary. With that, the build of the saw blade bulldozer was complete, and it was time for a test in the yard. The saw blades seemed to do their job. It cut through these thinner vines pretty easily. They could also cut through much thicker wood, but since the saw blades were spinning inwards, they would usually just pull it in and crack it in half. I ended up switching the direction of the blade rotation later on. Oh, come on! It was at this point that I realized RC construction vehicles are not built as well as real construction vehicles. Piece of crap. One of the track links just snapped in half. Luckily, I was able to order a replacement. It turns out that the track design of this thing is really bad. The pins that hold each track link together are just pressed into place, and they are held in by nothing more than friction. As I would learn later on, these things would wiggle out of place pretty frequently, so after every drive, you have to go around and hammer them back in. I used red Loctite to hopefully keep them in place more permanently, and then oiled the pins to reduce friction. The replacement track links that I had ordered included a new type of pin that was held in place by a screw head, so that's nice. Once the track was repaired, it was time for another test, and this time accompanied by a super slow-mo camera. Ooh wee, what you got here, Ansel? Got the hottest, latest new camera from Freefly. Is that the Ember? Sure is. bulldozer was too heavy to carry all the way to the park, but luckily it fit perfectly on the Varla Eagle 1 Pro electric scooter. And to all you tree lovers, don't worry, all the stuff we were cutting down would have gotten cut down eventually anyways. The trees were not in good areas to grow tall.
One cool thing about having the blades turn inwards is that they kind of blow the grass clippings into the bulldozer blade, and that redirects them up and out, almost like a snowblower. My initial idea was to have the blades turn inward so that they would pull sticks towards the opposing blade, and then both blades would cut through them. But this ended up not working all that well, because bigger sticks would just get jammed instead of getting sawed through. I had this piece of foam mounted here in the front to kind of hold the sticks out away from the convergence point of the blades, but it didn't seem to help all that much. So I decided to switch the direction so that the blades are spinning outwards. Okay, back to work, mowing the lawn. I swear, I only let my lawn get this tall to test the bulldozer. Typically, I love spending my valuable free time pushing around a lawnmower to make the grass two inches tall instead of three inches tall. It's really great. Jokes aside, this thing actually works pretty well as a lawnmower. You just have to be careful not to pivot turn too much or else the tracks will fall off. Before I had reversed the saw blades, grass clippings would build up against the dozer blade and kind of clog the system. Reversing the saw blades totally helped with that and now it's clog free. So let's try it out in some thicker stuff. These are a bunch of dead stems that grew the previous year. The bulldozer cut through them like butter. I was hoping that the outward spinning blades would help push all the cut brush to the sides, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It just kind of piles up in front and on the top of the dozer. This doesn't seem to slow it down though. It just plows right through. Here are some scraggly blackberry vines. Unlike the dry sticks from before, these are really strong and thorny. The saw blades had no problem cutting through the vines, but then they would just get caught on the bulldozer. At some points, it was kind of struggling to move around, but eventually it got the job done. Now it's back to the yard to take care of some horsetail weeds. These things are like three feet tall and so thick that when the bulldozer drives in, it disappears. There's a lot of morning glory vines in there that are really strong and get tangled in things really easily. The blades cut through all this just fine, but I'd say the biggest limiting factor was the bulldozer's delicate tracks and their inability to handle excessive skid steering. This is why I'm mostly just going back and forth and not turning very much. Watching it mow down two foot weeds is so satisfying. Just look at it go. One nice thing about having the saw blades out in front is that it doesn't push the grass over before cutting it like a normal lawnmower does. I think this helps it get through the really tall, thick stuff. Here's a before shot and after. Just incredible. Get yours today for the high cost of just $2,000. This thing is starting to look like a camouflage army dozer. So all in all, I'd say the saw blades definitely made this bulldozer more practical, but ultimately its practicality was limited by its own tracks. I think this thing is designed to just be driven around in a sandbox, and nothing more. Pushing around potting soil is totally doable, so maybe it can be a great upgrade to your vegetable garden. If this thing doesn't live up to my desire for a zombie apocalypse worthy machine that will devour all types of vegetation, then what will? Well, the closest thing I've found is a flail mower, so Colin and I rented one to play with. Also, because our neighbors complained about our yard getting out of hand. But anyways, it's basically just a lawn mower designed for thick brush. Instead of a single spinning blade like a normal lawnmower, it has a spinning tube with a bunch of things called flails bolted on. These are basically just V-shaped knives. They can pivot so that when you hit something hard, they don't break. They just pivot back, and the tube keeps spinning. This flail mower did a pretty good job at chewing through everything we threw at it, except for semi-rotten tree stumps. It didn't do too well with those. It did, however, do a good job at making it look like we at least sorta of tried to clean up the yard. Bigger versions of these flail mowers are mounted on tractors and are used for clearing the sides of highways and big jobs like that. Maybe someday I'll build a mini flail mower for the bulldozer. That would be cool. Need a metal shop first. So that's it for destroying vegetation. Back to the Comgro T500. The biggest selling point for this printer is definitely its size, so I wanted to print something that would take full advantage of the build volume. I hopped into Onshape, and this is what I came up with. It's a giant fountain made of little teacups that pour into each other. So I plugged the G-code into the T500 and started printing. This was supposed to be a four day print. It was at this point that I realized that this design was not very easily printable due to all the thin parts and steep overhangs. After it failed, I decided to cut it down into just one third of its original size and try that. It took quite a few iterations of adding supports and reducing overhangs, but eventually I got it to print successfully. 
After that, I cut away some of the supports and fed a silicone tube all the way through the frame. The top of the tube fit into a little resin printed nipple that would form a seal against the base of the top cup, and the bottom of the tube fit through another one that would seal against the base reservoir. Then I connected a little water pump to the tubes and filled it up with water for the first time. To my surprise, the FDM prints didn't seem to be leaking water at all. I initially thought that I would need to paint all the wetted surfaces in epoxy, but that didn't seem to be necessary. It did splash a bit at first, which was kind of nice because it made a lovely trickling water sound, but also got the table all wet. Eventually, I figured out that by carefully tuning the pump's input voltage, the flow could be made pretty laminar, and the water wouldn't splash out at all. If anyone wants to make this fountain, I'll put the on-shape link in the description. But I really wouldn't recommend printing it as is. My print barely worked out. The support structure definitely needs to be modified to improve printability. So this fountain didn't end up taking full advantage of the T500's build volume, but it did use up almost the entire Z-axis, so that's cool. I would highly recommend this printer to anyone looking to print big things. It also features a direct extruder and built-in clipper firmware. There's a link in the description for those interested. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.